Thank you very much and welcome to Philadelphia for those who are not Philadelphia residents or regional residents. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. I think Judge Wood Skipper was here last year. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. And Curtis Jones, one of our council members uh, in the 4th District in, in Philadelphia, the great 4th District, has been very much involved in, in, in what we're doing and trying to change the tone of how we police and how we, how, what we arrest for and what we don't arrest for. And our great police commissioner, Rich Ross, uh, who's in the back there, um, um, is doing a wonderful job with us uh, and improving the way in which we interact with our communities. Uh, that we police. Um, I would, I've been here a few times, it's been a, long, a little while since I've been here, but this plaque, I'm, I'm just so fascinated with it. Um, it is a World War II, World War I commemoration of those former inmates of this institution who gave their lives in the Army and the Navy. And it says, everlasting honor at the top, and they gave their lives, uh, they died for their country. But there's no names, they're all numbers which leads us to believe we haven't come all that far in the way we treat people who were incarcerated. Because all those numbers and all those World War I heroes had names, but no one seemed to think it was important to put their names up there, just their prison numbers. Um, we've been working, and thank you to your institute for being our partner in this Mag wonderful MacArthur grant that we received uh, in an effort to reduce our prison population. We've been, I, I want to tell you, and those from Philadelphia who have heard the story before, please bear with me, I apologize. But those who haven't, I think it's very uh, important that you understand the experience that I had. Because I've been in, pr in our prison system and our prison facilities a lot lately. I had been there before, but never as intensely as mayor. And I really like to go there because I do sense a great deal of hope and optimism, even from behind bars. I went to a graduation ceremony at Riverside Correctional Facility, which is our women's facility. Um, and it was life skills, anger management, just I mean, general things that... You, know, you should get as a child, but people don't get for various reasons. And these graduations are important because they're generally about two hours long, and they're not, they're, 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 they're acknowledging steps that people are making towards normalcy. Uh, and they were smart and funny and, and applauding their warden and uh, applauding the prison guards and encouraging each other. Uh, and I, I just, I, I kept on thinking to myself, if it weren't for drugs, and drug availability and drug addiction and lack of counseling and lack of job training, would all of these people be sitting here in behind, these, behind these bars or would they be out there with their children and doing jobs and things that we all expect each other to do? And I went early on to the Philadelphia Industrial Correction Center, one of our five facilities, and there I never knew this and I had been in council for about 24 years. We have a high school inside the prison because some of these young men have been charged with serious crimes. They can't get bail, but they still have their 180 day high school requirement. And I went in there and I never knew there was a prison. So I go in and there's four, men, four young men in a room and they're role playing Macbeth and doing quite well. Um, and in another room I went in as three young men standing at attention and they had a model of a parabola and they were explaining to me the mathematical and other, t I have no idea what, I, <laughs> I was just going, oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's, <laughs> but I knew he knew. And the, the young man who was explaining to me knew exactly what he was talking about, I didn't know. We went in another room before I left and kind of just, you know, shot the breeze with them a little bit, not about what, what they're accused of doing, but just in general about their lives and their direction and their hope. And one young man said to me before I left, he said, Mayor, this is the best school I've ever attended. And I gotta believe that the, lack of, that the fact that he had to go to prison to get into a good high school uh, leads me to believe that's a lot of reasons why he was there in the first place. Uh, that's why we've been working so hard on pre-K and on community schools and having facilities in our neighborhoods that really engender some hope and, 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 and belief that things can be better. That's why we uh, decriminalized the possession of marijuana before I became mayor. Um, I mean, really? I mean, really? Um, really? I mean, I'm going to give a kid a, a, an arrest record for having like less than an ounce of marijuana, or two joints on him. I mean, as I said before during the whole, and it was pretty controversial, you know, issue. I mean, it's, you know, the state and city has not come a long way in, in is relative to cannabis. Um, and it's getting there. States, medical marijuana, maybe some recreational at some point. But I said, if you really want, and, and we, and we had 4,200 people a year were being arrested for the mere possession of marijuana. And 83% of them are African Americans or Latinos. Well, you know, my son, I, I know he has smoked marijuana. I have smoked marijuana. Um, and I said, if you want to make a lot of mass arrests for people smoking marijuana, uh, home Eagles game, tailgate, uh, at Lincoln Financial Field, you can lock up a whole slew of people down there, but they're all white suburbanites and they're from New Jersey, and you're probably going to get in trouble for doing that. But the point of the matter is, is that this, these de minimis activities, 
look, you know, I'm not encouraging people to go out and smoke marijuana, nor abuse alcohol, or anything else. But for me, to, for us, to saddle a young man or woman with an arrest record that they have to carry like a piano on their back for the rest of their lives almost is insane. We have just passed with, with Councilman Jones and other people's uh, help and counsel a bill creating CVNs uh, for disorderly conduct, failure to disperse, public drunkenness, public urination. I mean, do I really have, look, I, do I wish they wouldn't do these things? Yeah, but do I need to lock them up and put them in our, in our criminal justice system for you know, being drunk and you know, going to the bathroom or a corner? I mean, I, I don't want them to do it, but I'd rather, give them a, I'd rather give them a civil violation ticket than to give them an arrest record. So that it's really extremely important for us to reduce. We have about 7,500 people on any given day in our county prison system, which means they haven't murdered anyone, they haven't raped anyone, they haven't, I mean, th these are, if you're adjudicated at these serious crimes, you're going to greater for, you're going to, to a state system. These are our county system people. 60% or so are waiting for, to see a judge. Can't make bail. And for $130 a day, we're, we're keeping them up on state road for 60, 90 days before they see a judge. To me, that makes, I mean, it's not only inhumane, it doesn't make any financial sense. That we were gonna spend 38 to $40,000 a year housing someone in our, in our county prison system, that's a wonderful tuition payment for a college or university. And if we could use our money in that regard as opposed to locking people up, uh, the other issue is one of reentry. I am working tirelessly every day dealing with people who are desperate, desperate to find a job. And some have skills, some have great carpentry skills, they can fix a car, they can do, I've had guys with computer science backgrounds who can't get an interview. And one of the things the councils did when I was there in Councilman Jones was ban the box. You know, the first, the first application when you apply for a job, you check that, is there a conviction? Yes, uh, it usually goes in the trash can. So we gotta get you in front of somebody so you can interview and figure out what the person's like. And even if the subject comes up, let them explain to you the circumstances. It's worth taking a chance on someone. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. Uh, and we need to make people, give them the ability to redeem themselves in their own eyes more than anything else, in their own eyes, to give them the dignity they need to raise their children and to buy a home and to do the things we all expect our kids to do. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm committed to that. I think our, our, I know that our communities will be better for it with less people in our jails, more people getting the help they need in drug treatment and job training, and more opportunities for work. So the work that you're doing here today is historic. It can change the history of urban environments and incarceration. And all I want is our kids to just have the opportunity to meet their potential. All of us, no matter how you pray, if you believe in a God, uh, whether it's, it's Muslim or Christian or, Judea, or Judaism, however you pray, God puts you on the earth for, to meet your potential. And obstacles get in people's ways. Some of them are the obstacles they create, and some of them are creative for them. But it doesn't mean they don't have an opportunity to come back to us as full human beings and, and with full dignity. And we're committed as administration to doing that, working with council to do that, working with our great court system to do that, and our police department to do that. Uh, we, have, we have a really different attitude about, about what it is, to, why you should be incarcerated, and what we can do to keep you from getting there. Uh, so please work hard, use your, use your muscle power in your brains, and come up with some great ideas for us to try to implement. And again, thanks for choosing Philadelphia as your spot. Appreciate it.